Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss how you can stylishly and effectively pair two primary colors, blue and red, in your outfits. <laughs> In the world of classic menswear, there are certain time-honored color pairings that are almost guaranteed to succeed. For example, you can find videos we've done on how to pair blue and brown and gray and brown together here. You can also find our article on pairing blue and gray together here, video coming soon. You don't just have to confine yourself to these staple colors of menswear, however. Case in point, the more adventurous pairing we'll be discussing today, pairing together blue and red. First, then, a bit of background on where you may have already seen this color pairing out in the wild. While it's not an exceptionally popular pairing, it is a favorite among politicians in the United States. A blue suit, white shirt, and red tie has been the go-to uniform for many a politician for much of the latter 20th century. That is, of course, if they're not wearing a black suit. We've got a video on that topic, why black suits shouldn't be worn very often, here. The intention with this red, white, and blue color pairing among politicians is obviously to echo the colors of the American flag. However, it won't look like a costume, at least when it's done correctly. Phrased another way, if this red, white, and blue color pairing weren't effective, politicians probably wouldn't wear it. After all, one of their main considerations is making a good first impression. A secondary reasoning here is that scientific studies have shown that red is perceived by many people to be a power color. Said studies have often reached the conclusion that wearing red makes people seem more attractive, outgoing, and successful, and boosts their confidence. In fact, a study of British soccer teams over 60 years actually showed that teams who wore red won their matches more often. This may have something to do with the fact that red not only increases confidence, but testosterone levels as well. So the psychological benefits of wearing red are clear then. But outside of trying to evoke the American flag, why do we think you should specifically pair it with blue? Simply put, the color wheel holds the answer here. Red is an intense color, the richer of the two warm primary colors on the color wheel, the other of those being yellow. Thus, because it is often so bold and intense, it works better in smaller doses when paired and grounded with a complementary cool color. And while red's direct complement on the color wheel is actually green, the color green contains some warmth, given that it's composed of blue and yellow. And also, the red and green color pairing has a particularly strong association with the Christmas holiday in many parts of the world. As such, at least in the world of menswear, it can often be a smarter choice to pair the intensity of red with the only cool primary color there is, blue. By the way, if you'd like a deeper dive on all of the facets of the color wheel and its terminology, you can find our video on that subject here. And another plus for using blue in this combination, as we've already said, blue is one of the staple colors of classic menswear, so you'll be able to find it in almost any garment and in almost any shade. All right, that's the color theory portion out of the way then. But on to the main question of the video, how can you stylishly pair blue and red in your outfits? Given that we've just covered how blue is exceptionally versatile in menswear and red less so, our first handful of examples are going to revolve around wearing a blue suit. However, this won't be the case for all of our examples, so stick with us. With most brighter or more intense colors, the safest bet is to wear them in your accessories. Therefore, you can start by incorporating red into your tie or your pocket square, possibly also with blue. As we've said countless times before, though, when it comes to ties and pocket squares, don't wear overly shiny satin silks, and don't match your pocket square and tie together exactly. Both of these choices are just going to come off looking cheap and unstylish. Instead, you could try a tie that has some texture to it, like a grenadine tie or knit tie in red. 
Another option would be incorporating red into a pattern like this Shantung striped tie or this medallion pocket square, both of them from Fort Belvedere. Or the tie I'm wearing here in today's video, which is a matter silk model in red featuring a blue pattern. For a different sort of accessory, you could also wear a red boutonniere, such as a carnation or a rose. Boutonnieres aren't commonly worn by most men these days, so you'll definitely stand out a bit if you try one. But if you've got one that's working harmoniously in your outfit's color palette, it's going to look all the more smart. You could also wear red cufflinks, as I'm doing here. Transitioning now from accessories to articles of clothing, let's first tackle socks. Now, we here at the Gentleman's Gazette are not big fans of outlandish or crazy socks, as we've discussed before. And as we've also said in today's video, red is an attention-grabbing color. So you have to decide if you're going to wear socks with red in them, whether you really want people's attention directed at your ankles instead of your face. To balance this then, you could go with a subtle yet distinctive option, like these shadow-striped socks from Fort Belvedere featuring midnight blue and burgundy. You could also go a little bit bolder, such as shadow stripes featuring navy blue and red, or blue socks with red clock patterns. And of course, now would be a good time to note that not every element of your outfit has to feature both colors working together. You could, for example, wear socks that just had shades of blue or red on their own and not paired. And you could incorporate other accent colors as well. As with any outfit, just be sure that things are overall working harmoniously together and not fighting for the viewer's attention. Let's move now to shirts. As we just mentioned, not every element of your outfit has to feature both colors working together. If you've already got some red in your accessories, tamping things down a bit with a solid blue shirt or a shirt with a pattern of, say, blue and white working together would be a safe bet. A bolder choice, meanwhile, would be a shirt incorporating a red pattern, such as stripes or checks. And while pastel blue is a staple of classic menswear, we wouldn't really recommend solid red shirts, either bright or dark, as they don't really have much of a place in classic menswear. They're more at home in contemporary looks and don't mesh well with the more classic fashions that we're talking about. A shirt with a red and blue pattern could also be an option, of course. Whatever the color situation, just remember, the finer and smaller a pattern, the more formal a shirt is, and the larger a pattern, or bolder, the less formal the shirt. Staying with the torso for a moment, let's talk about waistcoats and sweaters. If you want a larger pop of red, especially in the fall or winter seasons, you could try wearing a red-toned waistcoat under a blue jacket. Even classic British style, which is typically more conservative, will often take advantage of slightly more colorful waistcoats or odd vests. This will add some personality to your outfit while still being appropriate for most offices. The key here is just to cover up the bolder red hue with something in a more subdued blue. And if you don't own a red waistcoat, red knitwear could also be an option. This wine-colored cardigan, for example, pairs well with white and navy in the outfit shown here. Before we move on to jackets, let's take time for trousers. In warmer weather, chinos in a shade known as Nantucket Red are a popular staple of preppy style, which we've covered in a video here. Just do be aware, though, that this close association with preppy style can make Nantucket Reds seem a little bit snobby or pretentious, especially if worn in other areas like the UK. Otherwise, a darker maroon shade could work for almost anything from corduroys to odd trousers, and of course, your options for blue pants in any shade are almost limitless. Moving on to jackets now, and as was also the case with trousers, blue on its own is a staple of almost any kind of jacket, whether that be a sport coat, blazer, or a jacket for a full suit. The bolder option, then, would be a red sport coat, probably, again, most appropriate for the warmer months of the year. 
Something like a red linen sport coat would evoke more of an Italian or specifically Neapolitan style and could look smart with a white or off-white dress shirt and some blue pants. Meanwhile, darker maroons or burgundies could again be more appropriate for a wintertime blazer or sport coat. You could also seek out jackets incorporating both colors. A blue base with a red pattern over top would probably be slightly more subtle, and the reverse, a red base with a blue pattern, would be more bold. This is true for jackets as well as full suits. Next, we'll touch on overcoats. Similarly to how a red jacket would be a bold choice, so too would a red overcoat. Essentially, wearing red as any kind of outer layer is going to be more bold. Especially in the wintertime, red outer layers are definitely going to stand out more, so you could consider trying to tamp them down by having a few visible blue accessories, like a tie that's showing, a scarf, or maybe some gloves. And the guidelines we just discussed for patterns in jackets would also apply to overcoats as well. A brief word here about hats. Neither red or blue is an exceptionally common color for classic hats in menswear. However, you will probably find a few more blue felt hats out there than you will red ones. More often, you're going to see blue and red as colors on hat bands, such as often the case with straw boaters. Finally today, let's cover shoes. Simply put, you're not going to find too many men's shoes in classic styles that incorporate both red and blue together. Even something like a spectator shoe in dark blue and burgundy leather would be too bold for most men. With that said, each color on its own does have a slightly wider array of options in classic footwear. Neither color is terrifically versatile in shoes, but you can find darker oxblood shades in various styles, as well as blue suede shoes, or even some blue leathers if you're feeling a bit bolder. As you can see then, there are several ways to pair blue and red together in menswear, ranging from the subtle to the bold. Blue is the classic and versatile menswear staple that will almost always provide a base, and depending on how bold you'd like your outfit to look, you can choose how much red to incorporate and wear. In today's video, as you can plainly see, my outfit incorporates quite a bit of blue and red. The base color from which I'm working here is the suit in a medium blue shade. The other principal blue element is my shirt, which is pastel blue and also features French cuffs. In those French cuffs, I've got our platinum-plated sterling silver eagle claw cufflinks with red carnelian as the stone. Also from Fort Belvedere are my tie, which is in a ruby red shade featuring blue and slightly orange Macclesfield neats, and my boutonniere, which is a small red carnation. And my Fort Belvedere pocket square is a silk wool blend in a wine red color. Though you can't really see it in the current configuration, the pocket square also has accent colors of blue, green, yellow, and orange in a medallion design. My socks are our shadow stripe models in navy blue and red. Coincidentally today, the suspenders I'm wearing also happen to be blue, although they are the only pair of non-black tie suspenders that I currently own. And rounding out the outfit today are my shoes, which are hole-cut Oxfords from Ace Marks. They're in an oxblood red color with a hand-painted patina. And of course, you can find all of the Fort Belvedere accessories I'm wearing today, including the tie, pocket square, boutonniere, cufflinks, and socks in the Fort Belvedere shop here. <laughs>